Now, Meltzer talked about the internal reaction to the release of Kevin Sullivan and the feeling that AEW has changed from what it started out as. It's interesting because today I've gotten so much feedback from people, Meltzer says, people in and around AEW, and there's a lot of negativity right now. Meltzer speculated that a lot of the negativity stems from the poor attendance AEW Collision drew on Saturday night, which was 2,025 per WrestleTix. The negativity comes at a time when, while business is down for merchandise, ratings, and ticket sales, they're making more money than ever. AEW is also not as close to WWE in the ratings as they were 18 months ago. I'll stop there. Um, They were never close to AEW in the ratings. Maybe the demos, they were probably on par with what Monday Night Raw was doing, but now Vince is not there. You remove Vince, who was the fucking... You know, the poison, the venom in in, in WWE, you know, a lot is absolutely going to change. But 2,000 tickets for a Saturday night, Drew. I, I don't know where they were on Saturday. I thought it was a great show. Erie, but Pennsylvania. The, the Erie, Pennsylvania, yeah. Uh, yeah, the, the, the only thing that was eerie was the fucking amount of people that showed up or didn't show up. But when you watch AEW, bro, you, you, you see, you see the, the lights are so fucking dimmed on the crowd, right? And... Yeah, it was it, in the it, building it, on Wednesday. It, 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 well, I mean, Minnesota was a, lo- a much larger crowd than Saturday night. But, I mean, they're, they're running these 12, 13, 15,000 seat arenas. And, and they're mm-hmm. filling 2,000 fucking tickets. I mean, just thinking about it, it sounds ridiculous. And then when you watch the show, it sounds fucking empty. Like, that's right. not an AEW crowd. Like, why are they running these big arenas? Let, what is the what is the reason for... Why, why are people not showing up to these shows? And Tony Khan's putting on... Saturday was a great fucking show. Mm-hmm. Why? Let's let's call a spade a spade here, okay? Um, That show is created for one man and one man only, and he is gone. So they are making chicken salad out of chicken shit, or well, trying to. Well, get rid of it. Well, and, well, you know, Warner Media Discovery, you know, Warner Discovery wants it. Doesn't seem like it's going anywhere. And here's what I'll say. Um, I don't really fault AEW at all. The, you know, Warner uh, Discovery wanted the second show, number one. Number two, you know, the, the economy we're in right now, which is the absolute drizzling shits. Most people, if they're going to spend their hard-earned money on a Saturday night, are probably going to go out to dinner in a movie or something to that extent. They're not going to spend you know, 150 to 200 bucks to sit on the floor per ticket for an AEW show where a lot of the main talent that they want to see are not going to be on it. Like edge wasn't pulling double duty. Um, You know, they used to just have edge on collision and stuff like that. When, when AEW had two separate brands, it was basically a uh, CM punk and FTR show. And you had Starks over there as well. That has all changed. And uh, I think a lot of the fan base has kind of just been like, meh, I'm not going to waste money going to see this because I don't know what I'm getting, who I'm getting. You know, I went to Dynamite in Minnesota and there was no Bucks. There was no Kenny. There was no Jericho. There was no Starks. There was a lot of people who normally are on this bill that were not not on it. And Orange Cassidy and uh, Hook and and uh, Danhausen were all on Rampage. And so was Flair and Sting. So you had to stick around for that, which was smart by them. But I mean, there was a lot of talent not in Minneapolis. And we talk about the attendance again, and I'll touch on the buildings. Don't worry, people. The attendance, I don't think is overly alarming because WWE went through the same thing too, where they couldn't draw flies if they were shit. I'm gonna, I, I don't want to cut you off, but I'm, I, I have to. Why, why weren't they, why weren't they drawn, bro? The creative. WWE? Yeah, creative the, the, was terrible. It was terrible. And that's, so and, AEW's going again, through the same thing now. Well, yeah, and that's what that's what my point is here. I mean, what is AEW giving you that you could really sink your teeth into? Look at how well the Nassau Coliseum has sold for World's End because we are all expecting a reveal, right, of the devil for the most part. And it's MJF's hometown, and you're going to get Copeland and Christian probably, whether they're to singles or tag, whatever. You're going to get all the stars you want to see. Because it's a pay-per-view. AEW's pay-per-views have always drawn well because the problem has never been AEW's pay-per-views. It's been their goddamn television because you don't know what's going on on what show. Who's going to be on Collision? Who's going to be on Dynamite? We don't fucking know, but you better watch. That's a no. problem. How do we fix it? Yeah. How do we fix well, it? I, 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 listen, I have been saying this for months now. Sign me now. in, JD. That's what you do. That, no, I mean, uh, I mean, I, I mean it's, not even, it's not even a joke. I mean, uh, if I had a fucking ear in, in Tony Khan's ear... Right, if I had a voice in Tony Khan's ear, I tell bro, we got it. We got to split the fucking rosters. 
Like, this is what Drew is saying. Why is Monday Night Raw and SmackDown selling out every fucking arena that they're in every week? You know who you're getting on Monday? Though the show is repetitive at three hours, we get it. It's, it's a huge fucking pitfall for them. And then Friday, now they just added Randy Orton over there. Every Friday night, you think about spending money on, oh, shit, Randy Orton's going to be there. Great. Well, take the kids to go see Randy Orton. Roman Reigns is showing up this week. He right. works Friday nights. He never shows up on Monday. Now you're going to get CM Punk exclusively on Monday. They're going to sell out even more with him right. being over there. Who is that? Like, that Drew, like Drew said, who's on Wednesday? Who's on Friday? I don't fucking know who's on Wednesday. We don't know because there's not there's not a brand split. And the problem is, is like when Raw and SmackDown, you know, because I know people are going to be like, well, you remember in the 2000s when SmackDown launched? Not, not. Do you remember the fucking talent? They had in WWE at that point, they had to create a second show because they couldn't fit all their main event talent on one run. They had Austin, Taker, Foley, H. I mean, Big Show, Kurt Angle, Benoit, Guerrero. It uh, was it was it was ridiculous the amount of talent they had. Yeah, I mean, it was nuts, absolutely nuts. And again, like you're sitting here, and when Roman decides that he wants to take May through you know, July or maybe June through July off or August, guess who's going to be over on SmackDown running the show? Cody. Yeah. And they'll have Punk and everybody else on Raw. When To JD's point, in today's economy, I'm going to say this. I'm going to look directly into this camera like I do all the time, but I'm going to say this because I want you all to hear and see and feel this. I have three children. If you have one, if you have none, whatever. I am not spending my money on something where I don't know what I'm getting. I'm not going to spend four or $500 to go to a wrestling show, even three, when I don't know if such and such is going to show up. I'm glad you advertise Swerve Strickland and Jay White. Cool. You know, you advertise two other matches. Great. But I had to buy these tickets if I were to buy them months in advance. And your poster shows the box, Kenny, and I understand. It's all subject to change. People get hurt, blah, blah, blah. I get it. But if you want people to sink their hard-earned money into your product, Give us direction and give us what we're going to get. You don't have to tell us the matches, but man, who's going to be on dynamite? Who's going to be on collision so that I can take my family, my kids, or even myself and my buddies. And we know what we're going to get. It's going to be worth 150 bucks. We, we spend on ringside tickets or whatever else like that, or the 200 or whatever. I know if I go to SmackDown, I'll see Randy Roman, the bloodline, some other talent, the best women's division probably in wrestling is over on SmackDown. So I mean, like, again, give me something that I will sink my hard earned money to that. I know I'm going to get a return on and my return is my my enjoyment of your entertainment? It's it's crazy. It's crazy how much sense is coming out of this discussion right now. How the fuck can you justify Tony Khan? How can you justify having us watch a Saturday night with this sheer number of roster space that you have on this roster right now? And, and then on Saturday we get Kip Sabian versus Vikingo and the Work Horsemen and these other fucking jobbers that nobody cares about, unadvertised. Like, give me a fucking break with this shit. It's it's so it's so asinine. I don't even I don't even I I, I can't even fucking formulate words at how stupid it is. It makes no sense. Oh, Vikingo's one of the best luchadors in the world. I don't give a fuck. Who is he here? Who is he here? Nobody's paying to go see him. No. And again, all these championships, they mean jack shit. You got fucking Ring of Honor titles mixed with AEW titles. You got a new championship coming. We don't know what the fuck it's going to be. And then you got two shows. How many championships do we need? And then you're not even using 60% of your roster. And then you got a second show on Saturday night of all fucking nights. And nobody gives a shit about it. Yeah, and college football now is over. Besides the uh, the you know the bowl season is upon us, so you would hope the collision ratings go up. But here's you know my biggest thing is you know CM Punk had it right. You know he had that real world championship over on Collision, and they were going to have Starks run with that championship. It seemed, and that gave a lot of intrigue. Where is Starks in this Continental Classic? Is he even in it? Ricky Starks is not in the Continental Classic. No. Hey Tony, I understand you haven't. He probably hasn't re-signed, and he probably won't, but that's a fucking miss, dude. That's a miss. I don't know. Uh, th that's, why, that's why he's not in the Continental Classic, because he wasn't winning it. <laughs> he knows miss, he's dude. gone. 
But again, if you're going to have two separate brands, we're going to talk about a hard brand split, which is what you either need to do or let die. Somebody needs to be a major champion over there. I mean, you have the TNT title, which is around Christian Cage's waist. Probably, the, in my opinion, right next to MJF, the most important title on AEW's roster, okay? And you have the new Continental Championship that's coming, and you have the All-Atlantic, right? What is that what it's called, the All-Atlantic? The, uh, okay. what, the new one? Get, no, the new one's the Continental, correct? Yeah, yeah the international the, the international title. Yeah, there it is, the international yeah. title. There's so many Can't titles. Even fuck, my, we don't even know how many right. titles they got. My brain's, like, on, you know, overdrive here with the championships. But, I mean, like, give the brand a distinct championship so people can sink their teeth into a talent. We're, you're not. You're not. 